Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about episiotomy. What is episiotomy? Episiotomy is the artificial incision, artificial sterile incision that is made in the perineal region to deliver the baby more easily without any perineal tears. So that is called as episiotomy. So why do we do this? Actually, when the baby is passing through the birth canal, it is coming with lot of force. So when it is coming, it will tear the perineal region and it will come out. So what happens? The surrounding tissues that is the muscles and the tissues which is present in the perineal layer including the anal sphincters will get damaged when they are coming with great loss of force and when they are tearing the perineal membrane they even tear the anal sphincter muscles even with that much force they come out. So, to prevent these complications and to help the mother in the labor progress, we are doing this episiotomy or the artificial incision in the perineal area. So, now we will see the objectives. So, what are the objectives of doing a episiotomy? So, first objective is to enlarge or to give more space that is like to enlarge the way for the baby to come out. So, that is our first objective. The second objective is to minimize the injury. See, already I said you, when the baby is coming out, so what happens? It comes with great lot of pressure. So, what happens? It will lead to perineal tear. To prevent this, we are giving episiotomy. So, now let us see the indication. So, when, in which all conditions we do episiotomy? See, actually it depends upon the hospital policies the obstetricians and the condition of the mother when we are giving an episiotomy. See, there are some hospitals which prefer episiotomy than perineal tears and there are some institutions which prefer perineal tear than an episiotomy. So, it varies with the institution. So, wherever we are placed according to the institutionalized policies we have to follow. See, episiotomy is the best procedure instead of a perineal tear because already I said you when perineal tear is happening, it is going to damage many muscles and uh, like sphincters and like, uh, like uh, surrounding tissues, it is going to damage. To avoid this only, we are going to give episiotomy. So, it is a good method of conducting delivery. So, the first indication is anticipating a tear. See, sometimes for uh, a big baby, twin pregnancies, uh, expected uh, obstetrical emergencies, sometimes like uh, you expect for an uh, instrumental delivery, your forceps, ventos, in all these cases you will be expecting the perineal area to be little more open. So, at that time you give an episiotomy and then coming to inelastic perineum. So, inelastic perineum is like rigid perineum we say the, where the muscular uh, like rigidity is present and the it is not uh, like permitting the perineal stretching. So, at that time there may be a requirement for episiotomy and then we have manipulative deliveries so i said like in case if you want to uh, conduct a forceps or an ventus or otherwise uh, maybe there is a shoulder obstruction in all those areas you will be doing an episiotomy and to decrease the second stage of labor to fasten up the second stage see uh, already we have discussed in twin pregnancies and all like uh, polyhydramnias in all those areas where you want to fasten up the delivery process. At that time you will be using episiotomy to deliver the baby more easily and comfortably. And then we have fetal distress. Suppose you think when the baby is passing through the birth canal, you are assessing the fetal heart rate and the fetal heart rate is coming down. So at that time to prevent asphyxia in all those conditions you will be giving an episiotomy. So the indications include the anticipating tears in elastic perineum, manipulative delivery to fasten up the second stage of labor and in case of fetal distress. So in all these conditions you will be giving an episiotomy. Then we will see the timings of episiotomy that is when you will induce episiotomy. Episiotomies are given when there is full contraction 
when there is bulging of the perineal region. So, usually before the stage of crowning you give an episiotomy cut. Okay. So, that is when there is a perineal bulge that is when the perineum is becoming thin stretching and the head you are able to see near the perineum okay, where crowning is taking place at that time you will be giving when there is a full contraction at that time you give an episiotomy. So, for episiotomy you will be using the episiotomy scissors. So, I will be uh, like putting a video showing the episiotomy cutting as well as the suturing of the episiotomy wound ok in the further videos you can see. Then comes the types. So, usually we have four types of episiotomy suture uh, like episiotomy. So, four types the first one is the median, mediolateral, lateral and J shape. Median, median is the like a incision that is made from the center of the pro forechair towards the posterior region. So, towards the posterior region straight down you will be giving around 2.5 centimeter that is your median suturing. And then comes the mediolateral. Mediolateral is again you start from the center of the forechair and you will come laterally that is around 2.5 centimeter you will come laterally. So, you start from the center and end laterally that is your mediolateral episiotomy. And then we have lateral episiotomy which is 1 centimeter far away from the center of the forehead. So, 1 centimeter far you give a right or left cut. So, that is the lateral episiotomy. Then finally, we have the J shaped episiotomy. So, where J shaped episiotomy starts from the center of the forehead, you come straight and then you will take a 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock position. So, that is called as J shaped incision. So, we have four types the median, mediolateral, lateral and the J shaped incision. Then coming to the repair. Okay, so, incision we have given and we have delivered the baby. The next step is the repairing of the wound. When does this repair take place? So, again the timing of the repair. So, usually the timing is like once the delivery is over, the baby is taken out the placenta is removed and you have cleared everything that is like you swipe the perineum that is like you have to put your hand inside the uterus and you have to see whether any clots or bits or membranes or anything which is present inside the uterus. So, everything you will clean off swipe everything and take it out then finally, you can place a pad ok. So, vaginal pad you can place inside the uterus to control the bleeding ok because it is a fresh wound and definitely it will be bleeding ok. So, and just now the delivery is over. So, you will be having bleeding. So, what you have to do is vaginal pack you have to keep it inside which will control the bleeding episode. So, once the pack is kept you take a sterile pad and you like with an antiseptic solution you have to clean the complete area you have to wipe it off like all like everything the blood the bits and like the all the uh, uh, meconium vernix everything will be there ok. So, everything you have to wipe it off and you pour antiseptic solution over the perineal region make the area more sterile use a sterile cloth and you show the episiotomy wound. So, that you are able to see the episiotomy clearly then you start with repairing ok. So, preliminaries when we come to the preliminaries you are going to keep your sterile tray that is your episiotomy tray will be ready. So, from that tray only you have taken out the episiotomy scissor and you have cut. So, now from the same tray you will be using the sterile solutions the uh, sterile pads, the vaginal packs you will be keeping it inside, the vaginal uh, pads you will be using to clean the perineal region, your artery forceps, thumb forceps, suture materials, absorbable, non-absorbable everything will be ready inside that episiotomy 
suturing. So, that is with your preliminaries and the layers of suturing. So, usually you have three layers of suturing in different method. Okay. So, first is the vaginal mucosal and the submucosal area. So, that is the inner layer. Okay. So, what you will be doing is like already you have kept the vaginal pack inside. So, you will carry a pack uh, like you will carry a sterile pad in your hand and you will give compression over the episiotomy wound to control the bleeding then you start suturing. So, your mucosal and the submucosal regions there will be a continuous suturing that is like from the top to the like bottom you will be having a continuous suturing. I said I will put a video on the like demo like I will be doing an episiotomy suturing and I will show you ok. So, you will have a clear idea and then comes the perineal tissues then comes the muscular tissues ok. So, that mucosal and the submucosal uh, regions you have sutured that is continuous suturing again this is like perineal muscles again that is the second layer you will be suturing and finally, the third layer that is your skin and the uh, subcutaneous tissues you have to suture ok. So, these are the three layers of suturing. So, three types of sutures we will be using. So, this I will teach you separately and then the uh, post operative care. So, once the episiotomy suturing is done again what you have to do remember you have already kept the vaginal pack inside. So, you have to remove that pack and then only you have to leave the mother or otherwise the mother will go in for infection. So, what you have to do is like once the suturing is over take a sterile pad again wipe the area with the sterile solution and then see for the wound ok. Give mild compression and see whether there is a bleeding or whether something is there inside. Then put your hand into the vagina take the vaginal pack and see whether there is bleeding or not. Let the mother stay back in position for few minutes and then only you will leave the area for cleaning. So, then comes the post operative care. So, once the suturing is done you have to check the wound daily whether the wound is healing or not ok. So, what you have to do? You have to instruct the mother that every time when she is going for the toilet. So, every time when she is using the restroom she has to wash the perineal region first and then the anal region. So, it is always the front to back method you have to teach for washing. What is front to back wash? So, front is the vaginal region, back is the anal region. So, the first wash must be in the perineum and the second wash is in the anal region. So, the organism from the perineal region will go to the anal region which is already having microorganism, but now the wound is sterile and in case if you are washing from back to front what happens you are carrying the microorganism from the anal region to the perineal region which will cause infection to the mother. So, teach the front to back method of washing and then you have to assess reader. What is reader? ok. This again it is a very important question for your viva they will ask you. So, reader is R for redness, E for edema, the next E for echimosis, D for discharges, A for approximation. Discharge does not mean the bloody discharge ok. Discharge means the pus, drain or any uh, mucosal discharge which is coming out from the wound, the waste or the pus discharges from the wound it means. Reda is done only for the episiotomy wound and the discharge marks only for the episiotomy wound ok. So, you have to read for reader. So, that is the redness, edema, echimosis, discharge, the vaginal discharge kadayadu. It is the discharge from the wound, discharge from the episiotomy wound and approximation. Approximation is the wound healing together there is no gapping in between that is called as approximation. So, you have to assess reader every time when you are giving perineal care for the mother to rule out infection. Then you have to see for the comfort of the mother whether she is having any pain and you have to encourage the mother that she has to take adequate uh, nutritious food and vitamin C food which improves the wound healing. So, protein and vitamin C diet she has to concentrate so that the wound heals fast. 
and you have to tell the mother like she has to do like perineal uh, stretching exercises like that will hold strength of the perineal muscles okay then ambulation so ambulation it is not a great task for the mother after a normal delivery so like when the mother like within a uh, uh, five to six hours like as soon as the mother is comfortable she can definitely go in for a walk okay you can with the support you can make the mother walk and like when she is feeling comfortable she can even walk by herself without any support so then coming to the complications uh, we have your um, uh, like immediate complication and remote complications the immediate complication is extension of the incision see now already we have given an episiotomy and now when the baby is coming down sometimes what will happen the episiotomy wound may extend it may tear once again so always see to that when you have given an episiotomy always have a perineal pad supporting the perineal region so when the baby's head is coming out with the big force your support the perineal support will control the force and it will prevent the perineal tear even after the episiotomy then we have vulval hematoma see vulval hematoma in case even we are suturing if it is not done properly it leads to hematoma so it is definitely the role of the midwife to see carefully you don't put any complications on the mother so the mother must not have any hematomas if there is hematoma it is definitely our fault when we are suturing the wound and then infection so again you have to maintain the sterile equipments when you are giving an episiotomy and when you are suturing and when you are providing perineal care in the further postnatal days then we have wound dehiscence wound dehiscence takes place when there is an infection so when there is an infection when there is a sepsis there may be gapping so which may cause wound dehiscence so in these type of cases you may need a resuturing sometimes this happens even when the mothers are obese when the perineal muscles are very thick all these regions it can happen it again so you will be doing a resuturing so this is with the immediate complication the remote complications are dyspareunia dyspareunia is nothing but so uh, what we say is like it is painful intercourse so that is like the uh, the mother in the in the future days like after uh, her wounds are healing when she is having physical contact at that time she may have pain in the perineal regions so as that is called as dyspareunia and we have chance of perineal laceration so already I, we said like in case when there is delivery taking place that time also there may be a perineal laceration even in the future days also there may be perineal laceration so with this we complete episiotomy only the demo of episiotomy is pending that i will tell you in the next video of suturing okay so in today's class we have discussed the objectives the indications the uh, timings of episiotomy the types of repair the post operative care and the complications both immediate and the remote complications hope you understood the class in case of any doubts kindly comment me in the comment box and if you want any topic that also you can send a message in the comment box take care bye